The perspective that the Jewish people have on Jesus is a fascinating one. If you didn't know, a lot of people head to Israel to do a Holy Land tour. Well, the land of Israel has one of the smallest percentages of Christians in that land. Though that community is growing, it's still a very, very, very small minority. And it's interesting in terms of how Jewish people have to welcome in Christians, yet their views on Jesus himself it's very, fairly controversial. But before we get into that, guys, my name is Ruslan. This channel exists to encourage, empower, and inspire you to live a life that blesses God. If you're new here or if you're not new here, please do me a solid. Hit that subscribe button. As a huge percentage of the folks that watch this channel, unfortunately, are not subscribed. Jewish people are obviously are not a model. There are Jewish Christians. So what happens when a Jewish Christian connects with one of the most outspoken pro-Israeli advocates? And how does that conversation go? Well, that's exactly what happened over on the So Be It channel, where... Rudy Rockman, Rudy Israel, who I'm friendly with a little bit in DMs, one of the biggest pro-Israel Israeli voices, goes on campuses, debates people all the time. He is very gracious with Palestinian people, he calls mm. Palestinians his cousins. He blames British imperialism for how sloppy the state was drawn up and thinks that Israel is actually responsible in terms of fixing some of the issues now because Israel has the power. Hmm. So very reasonable. I would say even kind of more on the left side of how the situation should be worked out. And he's also IDF soldier. He was also in Gaza a few days afterwards. He's he's like on the front lines. I've never seen Rudy this irritated before with the Palestinian in the way he is with a fellow Jewish Christian. It's a Christian YouTube channel where we promote Jewish faith in Jesus. He, he I've seen this guy quite a while. Yeah, just yeah, stop yeah. and be like, I was once a Jew, and then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah his channel's fire, so yeah, this, his, this is a great crossover. Yeah, it's a crazy I, crossover. He's usually interviewing secular lay Jewish people. Mm -hmm. So, like, folks who live in Tel Aviv and, like, have never read the Torah. Like, he's that, that's those are the types of people he's interacting with. Yeah. So it's interesting for him to actually be, confront someone that's, like, studied and has some degree of education on this topic, hmm. right? That also isn't, like, a far-right, you know, uh, orthodox, ultra-orthodox Jew. Yeah, so yeah. this is like, this is the conversation I want to see. Like, these are the folks I want to see talking. I would love to see Rudy lean into this more. I would love to see this gentleman lean into this more and, and have these sorts of conversations. Because Rudy will sit and talk for hours and hours and hours with Palestinians, but I've never heard him talk to Christians like this. And then the interesting part is there is a, there's more Palestinian Christians than there are Jewish Christians. Yep. Right? Just just to sheer numbers. So I would love to see him have these conversations with Palestinian Christians as well as Israeli Jewish Christians. As a people, we're against idolatry. Yes. And uh, believing in Christianity and yeah. trying to get Jews to Christianity yes. is sort of spiritually destroying us. How so? And because you okay. think it's God, so, of course. So that's... out the rip, his accusation is that Christians are committing idolatry by following Jesus. That's hard. And that any connection to that is destroying the Jewish people. And even in him trying to be gentle, this is the, still the firmest I've ever seen him yeah. in response to this stuff. Spoiler alert. I thought he should have been better prepared for this. Rudy asks him some specific specific questions, and he doesn't give great answers. Yikes. Yeah. Uh-oh. Go ahead. This is the Messiah, yeah, yeah. and I don't see it as that. The yeah. Jewish people don't see it as that. So, Do you think he knows who he interviewed in this moment? Yeah, yeah Rudy, he has to. Rudy yeah. Israel is booming. massive, booming. Okay, bro. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay. But you got to come prepared. If you're going to have this conversation with Rudy Israel, you got you got to be ready. Because Rudy Israel, I mean, this dude is just, he's a jujitsu with debating really polarized charge conversations. But again, I do see him... A bit out of his frame in this. It as that. The yeah. Jewish people don't see it as that. So bring us do, actually. some very small percentage. Right. And of course, there's Jews who are against Israel as well. You know, the, right. the fact that there's Jews that believe in that doesn't make it right or wrong. Right. But the very majority sneaky, of us throughout history. Very sneaky to parallel Christian Jews to Jews against Israel. Mm. Very sneaky to parallel Jews who follow Messiah, who follow Yeshua, to anti-Zionist Jews that march with Palestine. Just being like, oh, it's few and far between, and and they have yeah. crazy extremist yeah, thoughts. Yeah, that's that's wild. That's what that's it's, it's yeah. Right. Have rejected to be converted to Christianity or to Islam, and I think that the Jews for Jesus movement is trying to make Christianity kosher for Jews mm. and sucking them out of where they're from mm. and bring them to Christianity. Even though Jews for Jesus believes that that Jesus is the Jewish Messiah, so it's it's, well, it's a it's natural really progression. See, like saying stuff like that is kind of like tricking to make Jews see like, oh, it's our Messiah, but it's actually the Messiah for the world that you're projecting. You're telling Jews to be like, oh, he's mine too. Yeah, but Jews are part of the world for sure. But yes. you, you like specifically <laughs> choose language to make Jews feel comfortable with a message that is very foreign to us and very destructive to us. What do you mean by us? Us as Jews. You're you're a Jew, Jews, yeah. right? So I'm. 
saying us. I'm considering you as my yeah, brother, yeah, yeah. even though we disagree on this thing. I appreciate that. We're still family. We're still Absolutely. brothers. And I'm going to be honest with you. Each other. Oh, no, that's right. what I want. Uh, yeah. That's, that's what I want. That's yeah. what I want. Have you studied the, uh, have you ever read the New Testament? Uh, I've read several portions. Okay. I would uh, bring all your viewers to Rav Tuvia Singer, yeah. which I think is I've the gadol on this topic. Really? And he yeah. breaks down many things. Even though he disagrees with a lot of the sages? Which sages? The sages, Rambam, Rambam. Does disagree with the sages? That he says that the Jewish people are the nation of that Isaiah prophesies, that the suffering servant is the people of Israel. Yeah. And that the sages, our sages, our Jewish sages actually mention that this is talking about Messiah. I think Mashiach is a generation, not a person. I think it's the accomplishment of a generation, yeah. not a person that's going to come and save the day. I've heard Rudy say this a lot. You got to have a rebuttal to this. Mm. Messiah is not a person. He's a generation. And we're the generation. We're going to develop peace with Palestine. You got to have, this is one of Rudy's Biggest, biggest biggest points. You wow. got to have a rebuttal to this. He didn't have a rebuttal to this, unfortunately. He leaned into the suffering servant. I think there's a lot there. This is a passage from Isaiah. I think there could have been. I think he could have leaned into this. So he's basically saying, "Hey, this guy, this expert you're saying actually disagrees with quite a bit." Generation, not a person. I think it's the accomplishment of a generation, yeah. not a person that's going to come and save the day. Really? Definitely not Jesus, who passed away. Zechon uh, Olevacha is a fellow Jew that died. Right. But uh, is not did the Jews of Jesus' time think that? That's a better question. Did the Jews mm. of Jesus' time, were they expecting a generation or were they expecting a person? Were Jews from antiquity expecting an actual revolutionary to rise up and liberate them from Rome or were they expecting a generation to rise up? That would have been how I would have pushed back here. Well, not to mention also when we reviewed that one clip from the Re the Rebbe mm -hmm. who talking to Netanyahu mm -hmm. in the 80s or the 90s, mm -hmm. he was they were he was talking about the Messiah not as a generation. Mm. And so it was like it's like it's not even just Jews from antiquity. Yes. Like there's, there's Jews today that believe in a person. Coming, yeah, that yes. they're, they're like, we need to hurry along the Messiah. The Messiah has not yet come. Yeah, not uh, a Messiah. Even though he rose from the grave. Uh, that's what you believe. That's there's true. no, there's no proof of that. I respect your right to believe. But actually, that. I want to, I want to talk about some of the, one of the things you said. And I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me, bro. I really appreciate it. And I love what you do out here. Yeah. Um, you said that Jewish believers in Jesus choose words to trick people. Yes. We actually living out our faith. Of course, you're living it out. But I'm, I'm saying that you guys cater your message to Jews to get them to connect to a Christian message that if it was just straight up just follow Jesus, they yeah. would reject it. So you don't see a Christian as anything to do with Judaism, as anything to do with the Jewish people? No, the, the, what do you mean by a Christian? The Christian Someone who believes in Jesus? Yeah. That should not be involved with the Jewish people. Not at all. No. Even though Jesus was Jewish, but his followers Abraham, were Jewish. Abraham's mission was to smash the idols and you're bringing the idols into our house. But how do you see it as idol worship? Jeez, man. So this, this accusation of idol worship, like he, this is, again, I don't see Rudy this aggressive with Muslims. Mm. I don't see him keep this energy with Muslims. So you're going straight for like idol worship without understanding that believing that Jesus is the Messiah, believing he's gotten a flesh is not the same as believing in worshiping an idol. I think there, there has to be better responses. And also saying that Jewish people who want to see other Jewish people become Christian are somehow bad and shouldn't do that and they just completely shouldn't have anything to do with it. It's yeah. like, bro, who says who? Who, yeah. but, right now, now you can, now if you want to say, if you want to play the the whole like, well, they shouldn't come into Jewish communities if they're not Jewish and Jews, but the Jews for Jesus, are Jewish people doing this, yeah, right. Whether it's my buddy Emmanuel, whether it's uh, Dr. Michael Brown, these are Jewish people that want to see other Jewish people come to faith in Messiah. Yeah, who who says that they can't do? Like based on what? Do you think he goes more direct to the Christian because want he like is in the Middle East? So if he was to go direct to the Muslims that he knows that he would be way more in danger just yeah. doing street stuff like this I think Rudy is more invested in building bridges with Palestinians than he is in building bridges with Christians uh. The part he's missing is that there's a stronger there's a bigger percentage of Palestinian Christians than I think he envisions and those people are like those people need bridges built too So not only do they have to get back past the ethnic aspect There's also this theological like you guys worship idols aspect that I think he's missing Believe that a man is a god or that man is a messiah that clearly wasn't. There's many things that the Mashiach would have to do that none of them That's Jesus right. did. Oh, he right? plenty. Bring the tribes back, bring peace to the world. Yes, but he, as you know, as you know, as you know these things, the God reveals himself. He does, he does, he progressively reveals himself over no, no, time. He doesn't the drop the do entire. That. The Mashiach will do that. And That's Jesus right. And he will do, do it. Okay, that's your belief. But yeah, you, yeah. you could understand why me, who knows Jesus didn't do that at that time, and you would agree with me that he didn't do that at that time, how could you be seen as a Mashiach? Because he did fulfill prophecy. Which prophecy did he fulfill? Well, he was supposed to be born in Mesbet Lechem. Okay, so there's many people born in different places. There's many people who Yeah, but this is one. But none of them are like actual He was supposed to come before the destruction of the second temple, okay. according okay. to Daniel 9, verses 24 to 27. Okay. Tribe of Judah. <laughs> okay, all of our tribe is the tribe of Judah. So he should have leaned into come before the destruction of the temple more, because then... Broody doesn't engage with it, and then he just moves on to another prophecy. Yep. There's also the suffering servant, su suffering servant uh, passage in Isaiah, which is, he will bear our iniquities, by his stripes we're healed. I don't know how you get around that specific passage. Yep. And, uh, and then he goes on to make a point here in a second and allows Rudy to just dismiss it as a 
mistranslation. Mm. Watch. And basis, in my opinion, respectfully, as a brother to brother, yeah. right? So for me, I look at Christianity as a belief in idolatry. At least they're believing, in, at least they're believing in one idol and right. not many idols. So the, it's already the, better the, than polytheism. The world, like Jesus has brought the recognition wow. of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to the world. And through, you mentioned Abraham. God there's told also, Abraham that he- There's also the, he didn't bring in peace. It's like, Rudy, do you really want to talk about the world before and after Jesus? Do you yeah. really want to talk about Come on, son. The, the, like, everything that changed? So perhaps he didn't cause peace worldwide, but oh my gosh, how much has progressed across the board in terms of human rights, women's rights, children's rights, and mm -hmm. a lot of a worldview that I would argue the the Christian the Judeo Christian worldview yep. has a lot of influence from Christian to Judeo as well as from Judeo to Christian, mm -hmm. right? And I think Rudy is missing that man. Some of your worldview in terms of like wanting to build peace with Palestine and all these sorts of things, which I love him for. That's not a Jewish worldview. That's not a that's not necessarily a Jewish worldview. That's not a Torah <laughs> eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, mm -hmm. vengeance worldview. You know, that's a lot of Jesus that then people on a global level because of the influence of Christianity benefit from. Through his seed, many nation, a, a great nation, and that he would be a blessing to the entire world. Sure, that. And that's what I believe, that, that our Jewish people were on this earth to make God known yeah. to creation, and that God actually has a plan for the Gentiles as well as the Jewish people. That I'll agree, but I'll tell you this, right? Someone can say the same thing yeah. and trying to bring us to worship Satan, right? Yeah. And say, well, you know, we brought Satan, but- oh. <laughs> Like, these are crazy rebuttals, bro. <laughs> these are crazy rebuttals. He's like, yeah, but like, it's the same as getting somebody to worship. Like, how, how do you make that leap? I mean, I, I see it's, to me, it's consistent. It's consistent for sure. Like we would say that to Muslims. They'd be like, oh, Jesus is a good prophet, but, and we're like, nah, dog, that's straight Satan worship. Sure, sure. And so, and he's, so. He's definitely consistent here. Yeah. I think what you're feeling is almost, it, it's, it's foreign because there's usually so many bridges built between the Jews and the Christians. Like even, even we see Ben Shapiro and mm -hmm. the Daily Wire wanting to go a little more Christian. We see like, mm -hmm. just like all the, the, the aid between even macro America and Israel mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. more of a Christian biblical mm -hmm. tie. And so, but now when, when it actually gets down to the brass tacks, it's like, they think we're Islam. <laughs> that, that's a fact. No, that's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah. We also just, I, I guess what I guess what I'm getting at is Rudy tends to be, and why I like his content, he tends to be very charitable. Gotcha. To Islam so and to Palestine. Different. And his tone and his energy. And I don't know if he like had that skip lunch. He seems irritable <laughs> here. Straight up. Like he seems no, very irritable. Seldom do I see him frazzled. Like there's clips of this dude getting yelled at by a whole campus of protesters in his mm. face, beating drums. Saying like saying crazy things to this dude, and he just he just keeps his composure, stoic, very gracious. Yeah. And here it's like you guys worship idols, you guys do this, don't come around Jews. Leader of his time, whether it was good or bad, none of us were there. You believe it was good? I don't know, right? Yeah. He could have been a great guy. He clearly was a, a rebel of some kind. He didn't like the status quo. He wanted to change things up. That's no doubt, right? He was a disturber of the Roman peace, which I support, right? Because the Romans were colonizing our civilization. Right. But at the end of the day, he was killed. Yeah. And once he passed away, we need to move on. And I think that a lot of the world took his life and turned him into a deity, which is why I see it as idolatry. And then he died, and we just didn't move on. And it seems like a lot of the world, the world yeah. took his life and turned him into a deity. The biggest like, religion ever. It's like, okay. The <laughs> most amount of people worship this dude and you're just like, move on. We need to move on. The world turned him into a deity. Or maybe he was a deity. Yeah. Like, like, like yeah, 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 for sure. Oh, the whole world just agreed on this thing and just took it. All different cultures and generations and spread for thousands of years. Yeah. And there, just, Jesus got too much hype. Yeah. We just need to move on. We just need to move on. <laughs> so there's good arguments for a physical representation of Yahweh. There's good arguments for it. Mm -hmm. And he references one of them in a second, and I wish he would have leaned in more to it. I, I don't know if Rudy had to run or what was going on here, but I think this could have went deeper. Even though I love you as my brother, yeah. I think it's extremely harmful to bring these ideas for which so many Jews yeah. were burned resisting. Yes, and now you're, you're bringing it back to us. Ex extremely harmful. Your words are violence. That's crazy, Rudy. I love you, brother, but that's crazy. No, not that's, that's not true because you can't judge a faith by its abuse. And right. if you know the teachings of Jesus, you would realize that it would lead to the loving of the entire world. It would lead yes. to forgiving your enemies. Yeah, but healing yes. them, not just forgiving them. Absolutely. You have to help them heal from the Absolutely. situation. So Absolutely. for sure, I look at those who adopted Christianity over time, yeah. mostly by force, yeah. and realize that I'm not going to go and hate them and fight them. Right. I should show them that Hashem is one, and there's no intermediary thing in between us that should disconnect us from But intermediate, the intermediary thing has been a Jewish thing since the beginning of, awesome. of time. Awesome. Well, Moses was an intermediary. The he high was a priest leader, were, but no one, no one was praying to no, Moses. No, the people, the, the people, were not praying the, to the people on the, no, right. Now, would he keep the same energy for Islam when Islam has prayers to Muhammad in their prayers? 
They, they're literally referencing Muhammad and talking yeah. to Muhammad in the prayers they do five times a day. So are they is Muhammad their idol? And would you have the same energy yeah, and call be like, Islam idolatry? Yeah. Muhammad's your idol. Because Straight you pray idolatry to him. worship. Right. Right. There's a lot of inter inter intermediaries in other religions, mm -hmm. Islam being one of them. And they will, they will make the same point. And then you say, well, wait a minute. When we read your prayers, you guys are praying to Muhammad. What yeah. is the difference? So there's a degree of divinity or intercessory that Muhammad is doing for you. We're not telling Moses, yo, we got this. We don't need you. They were trembling in fear. You go up on our behalf. There's no problem with having the a leader. No one is saying it's not a leader. Yeah, they, but when you pray to Hashem, yeah. there should be nothing disconnected from Hashem. There should not be a Mary, a saint, uh, a and Tessa, I agree with you. or a Jesus preventing us from getting. Now, you, you agree with me because or you see... Jesus. Or Jesus. He just threw like Jesus in line with like the saints. Yeah. So it was like, he's like, no, I agree with you. And then he says, or Jesus. And I was like, well. <clears throat> By the way, Hashem is translated as the name. They won't say the, Yahweh, so they say Hashim. That's what that's what that's what he's saying there. So it's not that, that's actually not a name for God. It's it's Hashim is the the the, the name because they're afraid to say yeah. Jehovah. Jesus has God. Right. Right. So right. for you that that's God. But I disagree so you don't understand why no, for totally, me. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Not. Absolutely. But have you have you have you noticed in the Tanakh that occasionally you'll see a figure that appears in human form talking with Abraham, Jacob, Gideon, Manoah in a human form, eating with them, having his feet washed, walking from place to place, I mean, there's, there's speaking, hold on, speaking in the first sure. person, for speaking as a first person as God and doing things that only God can do. Jacob yes. says, I've seen God face to face and my life has been delivered. They were expecting to die when but they saw God. You're assuming you saw Jesus. I, I, wasn't, I didn't say Jesus, no, I just said God, physical, a physical manifestation of God. Doesn't mean you need to see a physical thing. You can see in many ways. You can see someone's actions. You can see someone's spirit. I'm just going by what the, what the text right. says. So you're, you're translating it literally. And I think a lot of Christians, maybe not you, because you're a Jew, they yeah. translate it through the English mistranslations and they interpret things with different words that were so used. So this is an Islam, Islamic talking point. It's a, you go into mistranslation, which again, the conversation is going to go into which sources do you trust? So in Genesis chapter 29, we see that there is two Yahwehs. Okay, there's a Yahweh on earth, and then there's Yahweh that sends down. There's a Yahweh on earth with Abraham. And then there's a Yahweh in heaven sending down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah. So we see a physical re a representation of Yahweh. And of course, Yahweh, when you see Lord, right, when you look at that term, that, that tr is translated to, Hash well, they, they would say Hashim, but here in the, in the blue letter, you see it as Yahweh. Abraham is with Yahweh on earth. There's a, there's, a, there's a physical Yahweh on earth that comes with the, two, with the two other angels. And then there's a Yahweh in heaven. That's not a mistranslation. There's multiple times where there is a Yahweh engaging with Abraham, and there seems to be a Yahweh in heaven and a Yahweh in earth. There's a Yahweh sending down the fire on Sodom and Gomorrah, and there's a Yahweh physically present with Abraham. Now, as Christians, we would be like, yeah, there seems to be these physical angel of the Lord, physical representations of Yahweh on earth in the flesh. Sounds a lot like Jesus. Oops. That's what we would say. You can't you can't discard that as a as a mistranslation. Yeah. If we go into the Jewish version of the Hebrew, is that not a Yahweh with with with, with Moses? I mean with uh with Abraham? You know what I mean? I I don't think so. I hope that you're using the Hebrew. Yes, we're right? studying Hebrew and in Israel. So I hope that you're using the actual original Hebrew and yeah. getting to the conclusions through the Hebrew and not through the others, because then, of course, you're already like, you know, using Yeah, the but I do agree, though, that, that you can have good translations, because otherwise sure. God would I be mean, saying, if you, if you God would be saying, like, a lot of, a lot of uh, Muslims will say, you can't come to God without knowing uh, uh, Arabic. You can't, you can't understand our faith. I don't, faith I don't, I don't either. That, right. I don't either. But you can have a Tanakh that's properly translated from our Hebrew and from our sages and not take it from Christians. Yes, but you have Tanakh that's translated from Hebrew to Aramaic, from Greek to Hebrew. Right. It depends you know, who's doing the translation. If yeah. the people who preserve the Torah, yeah. who kept on the scepter, as, Ye as Yehuda was supposed to keep the scepter, and not from the outside, yeah. then obviously from the outside, it's going to be a little bit corrupt and most likely intentionally corrupted to yeah. fulfill agendas. So I think the translations <laughs> need to come so, from our people. Even if we show them in the Hebrew, there's two Yahwehs, how can there be a physical Yahweh on earth and a physical Yahweh in heaven? Even if the, the issue here is going to come down to they'll find some source or something, or it'll just be they're veiled as it says about the Jewish people, unfortunately, right? Yep. So props to this dude for engaging. I wish he would have had a bit more prophecies lined up besides Bethlehem, tribe of Judah. Uh, I think the suffering servant passage in Isaiah is very strong. And uh, I think the case for there being two Yahwehs and a Yahweh physically present on earth, not in an abstract sense, right? Mm -hmm. I think would have been 
a, a, a great argument. But I'm glad that Rudy had it. I think it was a little too short. And they do, to, to their credit, they do hug it out at the Me end of this. And you, yeah. there are those translations that exist. And again, I respect your right to do what you want. I still see you, my brother, but I hope that you will, you know, do a tikkun and ridding yourself of idolatry and come back to Hashem because Hashem is one. It doesn't have to be other things as well. Rudy, thanks, bro. Of course. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me and hearing course, my and you should know it's perspective. All love. It's all love. Yeah, man. Yeah. Love you, bro. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Of all right. So we're gonna look at an amazing clip from a comedian. All right, so this is from Noah Garden Swartz. All right, so I, this was sent to me by my man Ray Rock and I, I thought that it was amazing. Go ahead. I don't think enough people think about Jesus from the Jewish perspective. This is gonna go great. <laughs> <laughs> Just hear me out, stay with me. Jews already had a God they really liked when one day Jesus came around claiming to be God. Imagine spending your entire life working at a company for a boss you really liked when one day the boss's son came in claiming to be your new boss. Perfect setup. Perfect setup for, for, for a perfect bit, in my yep. opinion. Okay, the Jews got a God they like, and then Jesus shows up mm -hmm. and makes some claims. Go ahead. We were like, no, you're not. We have a boss. We like the boss. You're not the boss. And he's like, I'm the boss. <laughs> we're like, no, you're not. We have a boss. We like the boss. You're not the boss. And he's like, I'm the boss. We're like, no, you're not. And he's like, oh, yeah, watch this. Then he goes and fixes the printer. <laughs> <laughs> this dude. I haven't worked in a corporate yeah. setting for a long time, but janky printers are definitely an issue if you've worked one of them office jobs or cubicles. Time Brings on. back enough coffee and donuts from the break room for the entire office. <laughs> and all of a sudden, some of the young employees are looking around like, Maybe he is the new boss. <laughs> so the old employees, they get nervous, and they go and tell HR, the Romans. <laughs> and they don't want him to get fired. They just want him written up on his file. They just want someone to take notice of the fact that he's causing trouble in the break room. But HR fires him. HR fires him. But everyone blames the employees. <laughs> so then he goes and starts his own new company and offers everyone free health care. And all you have to do to get hired is acknowledge that he's the new boss and he got fired for your mistakes. Oh, my God. Oh my that's, that's OK. All the tie ins, the Romans, the HR fired. Yeah. And then all you got to do is acknowledge and you get a better job with health care. <laughs> Uh, uh, amazing, amazing bit. I'm not sure if this dude is a, is a Christian or not, but the parallel is flawless here. We sometimes forget how the, 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 the tricky dilemma that Jewish people are in. Hey, thank you so much for checking out the video. Comment down below and let me know what you think. And be sure to check out this video that YouTube is recommending just for you. Let me know if they nailed it. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.